Hello everybody, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm Stacy and I am getting ready to do these couple of little canvases here because I just had them laying around and um, I thought I'd finish them off. And I'm trying to see if my pouring table is a little bit more level. I've shoved a bunch of stuff up under the side over here, which is my pathetic effort at trying to get it level. Um, trying to put off getting the leveler and actually doing it right. So, anyway, um, we'll see how it works. Um, the best way to test it is to pour some puddles on here and see which way they want to travel. <laughs> um, I'm using my Crafty Bright Tone as my varnish and... The rest of it's all the same. Um, the full recipe is in my video called Blooms Today, or Today's Bloom, sorry. Um, in the description, I wrote it all out in pretty great detail. But it's gluten pre premium, some of all base one and base three is the paint and the base tint. And like I said, the bright tone is the varnish. That's by Craftnique. And it's a three to one ratio, three parts paint, one part Craftnique bright tone. And for my pillow, I'm just using the Good and Semi Gloss Base 1. And I put a little bit of GAC 800 in it just to prevent crazing, which works absolutely. Um, although, like I said sometimes before, I suspect that the Good and Paint wouldn't craze anyway, but it might. I don't know. So, um,. I just put the GAC in just to be sure. Not much, just about, like about a half inch, you know, wide, just a little bit. And uh, what else? I want to do something that I pretty much know how to do right now because I've been experimenting with uh, trying to use this pouring medium and make one big bloom. And I've got a couple of videos out where I'm working on it and I've gotten kind of close, but uh, I wanted to do something that didn't use as much paint and um, I'm kind of in that refractory period of trying a new idea where you try something and then you have to go back and think about it and figure out what you want to, you know, uh, tweak and change and all that. So I'm in that period right now. So I needed to leave it alone for a little bit. And I thought in the meantime, I just do these. Now these colors are mixed with the bright tone and the base three. Um, and I didn't thin them any with any water this time. I'm leaving them kind of thick because I just want to. Um, and see if there's a difference, you know, between having them thicker or thinner. You know, I haven't fooled around with that experimentation very much, so I'm doing that. Uh, but also, they have silicone in them. And I know that not everybody's doing that. Um, but I think it helps. Um... One issue that you have is with adding silicone is that if you use these colors over and over, you'll stir the workfulness out of the silicone because silicone will degenerate if you stir it too much. So you have to kind of keep adding it uh, every day if you're going to keep that paint. All right, it's tilted that way now. Interesting. Okay. Um... Anyway, that is Liquitex Light Green Permanent right there. And the blue is, um, it's a mix of phthalo blue and turquoise and um, Prussian blue. And uh, it's my own little combination because I was just wanting something a little bit different. This is Master Such Yellow Deep. All right, that's enough for that one. I don't want to put too many colors. Oh, shoot, that was not good. It fell between the rolls, but it's okay. I fix it, okay. But I, ooh, whoops, <laughs> we're having all kinds of issues today. <laughs> I pushed this one all the way across the table. Okay, let me try to fix that. <laughs> wow, it's not, not starting out so good. <laughs> All right, let me put my cell activator on here. I'm making a horrible mess, and that looks like an egg yolk. Um, anyway, here we go. <laughs> Calamity Jane here. Um, this, oh, I'm experimenting with cell activators, too. This cell activator is, um, it is, 
Amsterdam's black. I can't remember if it's Mars called Mars black or just black, but anyway, it's black. And I added some titanium white to it because there's something in that titanium white that is special. And so I added some of it and then I redarkened the black with some Amsterdam black ink to make it dark again because the white lightened it to, to gray a little bit. And then I've added a little glue to it because it needed to be thicker. And I've added silicone to it because I wanted to. So, like I said, I, I'm always trying new things. You never know um, what's going to make something, you know, better or worse or whatever. But anyway, you can't pop all those bubbles. I'm going to torch it, probably. I've been trying not to torch... Uh, I was thinking yesterday when I was working on those big ones, of course, this could be a consequence of other things, but I was seeing these small little pinpricks, and I was wondering if the torches caused them, so I'm not going to torch this one right now. I'm going to see how it turns out. Maybe I'll torch the other one and see if it does that. I don't know. They didn't really bother me, um, but I was curious, so we'll see how it turns out. And let's see how this goes. sit for a minute while the paint runs back together I'll put it right there and hope it doesn't move uh oh I'm just making a mess I swear what is wrong with me today like a bull in a china closet all right we'll go ahead and pour this other one up here while that one's resting I already did that um anyway what else was I gonna tell y'all um yeah, we're in, a, we're in a little bit of an experiment here because uh, I'm I'm interested in the torch or not torch conundrum um, because I've been torching and I haven't had any problems with it. Um, other people say don't torch. Um, I'm not sure. So, um, I don't know. And, and up until yesterday, I was sure that there were no untoward effects from torching. Um, and then, um, I started seeing some of those, those, these little pinpricks in what I was working on, and I'm not sure what caused them. I don't know that it was torching. It might have, I had to use some of that, um, Josana's varnish instead of craft neat because I had some I needed to get rid of. And, uh, so I, it, that might have had something to do with it. I really don't know. Um, and because I don't know, I just thought I'd wait and see what happened today. Um, see what happened today and see if it repeated itself or, you know. So I'm not going to torch one of these right now. I'm going to leave it alone and um, maybe I'll torch the other one. I don't know. I hadn't decided yet. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just like a wrecking ball. I, I have no idea what I'm fixing to get into. Ugh. I just know that I'm enjoying working with this pouring medium a lot better since I started the Glidden paint and the Bright Tongue. I know that since I've done that, um, it has worked better and that makes it more fun um, because I haven't had all the problems that I was having. Because I was using that Color Smart Walmart paint and I had read that that was fine. Well, it ain't fine for me because I was having holes in it. I was having crazing. I was having all kinds of problems. Let's see what this one does. You know, it's pretty. Okay. That one's pretty. 
Sorry, I like that one. Anyway, uh, the wooden paint made a big difference. Let's tilt this one. And I think the bright tone makes a big difference. Those are the things that work for me. That's all I'm ever going to try to tell y'all about are just the things that work for me or, or the things that I've heard, you know. Um, but I've tried a lot of things. I've tried different combinations of the polyacrylic um, with the base tint. I've tried the Josanas. I didn't care for it. Um, you know, I've tried the Josanas and the polyacrylic. Um, I just think the bright tone works the best. Jen Neal's the one that turned me on to it, and um, I just think it works the best. I don't know. It, it, the best results I've had. I've seen some other people do some beautiful things with just polyacrylic or just other things, but that's the interesting and frustrating thing about these is that what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another person and I don't know why that is but I know Jen was talking about the cell activator or somebody maybe it wasn't her but somebody was talking about how they were trying just the Floetrol and titanium white as a cell activator and that they couldn't get it to work and so they had come up with that more complicated recipe that involves the wood conditioner and all that stuff well, I've used that one, too. Um, but, you know, it was like everybody else is just using flow straw and paint, and it won't work for me. Why? You know, I don't know why. It's just the way these things are. They're very temperamental. And um, I just, you know, I got so frustrated that I, I didn't know what to do with it. And so I just decided that I would ask for help, first of all which is always a big thing, you know, I don't know why it's so hard for us for, to ask for help, but, you know, I just said, look, I don't know what the hell I'm doing wrong, and, um, that was the first step, and then to, um, to ask for help, and then, uh, to just keep trying, because you just really have to keep at it, they just take a lot of practice, but, uh, you have to find what works for you, and I don't know why that is, that one particular recipe or one particular, you know, cell activator or whatever, one particular thing will work for one person and not for another when they're mixing it as close as they can, as close as they can to the exact same. But it's absolutely true that that's the, the case. So I don't know. That's pretty. Okay. I'm going to put this one. Oh, if I can reach. All that there. These little things are wobbly on, on my sticks, and my sticks are pretty damn close together this time. And pretty, and a lot more even than they were. And these things are still kind of, kind of wobbly on them. I really like this one. I, just, I like that purple. Ooh, look at the cells that are forming over there on, on right there on the left. I hope I don't have to pull them off. That's really cool. Right here, right there, and over here. That's neat. I'm gonna try not to lose them. I'll just pour a tad little bit and then suck them back in. There we go. I kept them. Yeah. All right, get the weight of the paint back in the middle. Go to this side. And this, these little spots over here are really cool. I like that one. It's pretty. Yeah, I've made quite a few of these in the last few weeks working on this. I didn't start working on these when everybody else did. At first, I was like blowing on paint. I mean, come on. <laughs> Somebody's got too much time on their hands. Then I started seeing what they were making, and I was like, holy shit. I'm fixing to start blowing on some paint. Because <laughs> they're really interesting and cool and fun to do. So, if you're like me and you were struggling with them, try this recipe that I've got and don't give up. Never surrender to the dysfunctional paint. When the paint is being dysfunctional, never surrender. Just keep going. Keep trying. That's what I say. Because it happens to everybody. This one's gorgeous. I really like that. It's really pretty. The cells up there at the top. I wish it was a bigger canvas now. Why does that happen? Every time I have a really gorgeous one, it seems like it's on these little ones. 
and I'm just wishing that the canvas was bigger and I could show more of it. That's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to torch that one and see if it does anything to it, since this one's my favorite. Um, because I need to know about this torching thing. I need to know if those little hen roots, even though they weren't really a problem, I need to know if torching causes them. <sighs> I just can't stand the not knowing. So I'm going to take a good look at it before. And I'll take a good look at it before. Yeah. I see those little pinpricks again. Alright, no more fortune. I don't think. I, I don't know. They don't really hurt anything. In fact, they're kind of like, I mean, I don't know. Tell you what, I'll just leave these other ones. I'll stop torching them a little bit and only pop the big air bubbles that I can see because there's others that I can't. I know there are. Because that craft nick, that's one thing about it. It bubbles like crazy. Makes a bunch of little bitty ones. But I haven't ever seen, I don't know if they cause a problem when they're drying. So we'll just see how that, you know, um, when they dry, see what, you know, what comes out. But yeah, I do see some little pinpricks up there. So, um, uh, as for my torching, it's it's on hold at the moment. I don't I don't really want those little pinpricks in there. They don't they're not very obvious, but they are there, and I don't really like them. So I've decided I don't like them. So I think I'm not going to do that anymore. I wonder why it just now started happening and it wasn't happening before, because I've been torching them for months now and not had a problem one. I don't know. Oh well. So much for that. We'll see. These are beautiful, I think. I hope y'all uh, think so, too. Let me show you up close. All right, camera, catch up with me. Right in there. Ooh, that's beautiful. Looks like a parrot. Reminds me of those macaws. Look at that. Mmm, pretty. Really pretty. All right, let's look at this one. See those little bitty pinpricks? Yeah. They're not real obvious when you look at the whole thing. When you look up close, you can see them. Yeah, you can see them. Those weren't there before I torched. I mean, they're kind of pretty up there. But as a whole, no, I don't think I care for them. All right. Well, thank you guys for being with me. I totally appreciate it. Every single time you're with me, I appreciate it. And I hope y'all are all staying safe and staying healthy. And God bless you all. Come back anytime.